welcome back. I uh, wanted to show you one of my latest projects and uh, this knife had seen better days. It's, uh, it's quite an old knife. I, I got it when I was pretty young, 10 years old or something. And um, basically this sheath has really seen better days. Um, it's, it's totally unusable now. And uh, and I didn't like the way that it fit anyway, so so I, I kind of stopped taking this hunting knife or, or uh, sheath knife camping. Um, the other thing was that I burned it by mistake uh, while I was winter camping a couple of years ago. Burnt the handle, and uh, so I had to replace the handle. So I uh, carved down this piece of wood, uh, which I believe is apple or maple one of the others extremely hard uh, and uh, just found it when I was walking in the neighborhood and so I uh, pared it down uh, drilled it out put it on this handle and put it on this uh, this knife and now it's a really usable knife again um, sharpen it up it's uh, as you can see it's <laughs> it's really sharp um, and the other thing I wanted to do was obviously make a new sheath, and so that's what this—that's uh, what I wanted to talk about today. And uh, I really wanted to make a uh, a dangler sheath sheath uh, for it. I'd seen it online. Um, Joe, Ro like so, so many people have them now, and uh, it, they're really comfortable to wear. They they fit the hip really nicely. Um, and they don't get in your way, you know, they, they move around with you so that, uh, so that they don't kind of hug your body quite as much and, uh, dig into you as you sit down or move around. So, uh, so this is a really exciting project for me. I, uh, really enjoyed doing it and it was my first experiment with, uh, leather work and I think that it turned out really nice I'm so happy with it um, and uh, so you know it's uh, I'm pretty impressed it's such a nice uh, such a nice sheath I'm gonna we'll show you a little bit about um, not how I did it but basically uh, what it, what products I thought that I needed to buy uh, and what products I didn't think I needed to buy. And so, um, you know, you can spend a lot of money on the different tools for leather working. And so I wanted to figure out uh, what I could make myself and what I needed to buy. So first of all I did was uh, looked at YouTube. There's two key guys that seemed to to make a difference out there with what I was looking for a bushcraft dangler sheath and uh, so the arts the art of craftsmanship um, made made a beautiful uh, beautiful sheath and um, Leotis leather Ian Atkinson both guys that made the kind of stuff I was looking for and uh, Ian Atkinson really goes into a lot of detail um, and provided a lot of valuable information so that was great um, then I decided what things I would buy and what things I would do without um, and uh, so kind of decided I'd spend about $120 Canadian at Tandy and um, you know then I can make this sheath and one for my son and one for my brother and you know that kind of stuff so and then I wrote down all the instructions, kind of step by step, as to what what technique I wanted to use. Um, you know, there's a few different opinions out there as to which direction you go and what order you go in. So for the piece of leather that we that I used, um, my brother had uh, this piece of leather sitting around the house, so he lent it to me to uh, to use it for this project it's a uh, it's a five ounce uh, weight and or thickness and uh, which is a little thinner than they suggest it was uh, you know they suggest seven or eight 
8 ounces thickness. So for my design, I just used a uh, standard piece of paper. Nothing, you know, in this case it was graph paper, which uh, helps uh, with straight lines and whatnot, but um, just, just a piece of paper. You don't need anything special. Um, for cutting, um, I did buy this corked back ruler. It's just, it's a nice small ruler, one foot, um, that just allows you to, you know, cut straight lines carefully. It's pretty cheap. Um, and then knives wise, I had uh, an exacto knife sitting around the house, and I also had a nice, uh, nice firm uh, cutting blade. And then for this, I used for my skiving. So you know, just a straightforward uh, razor blade that you can pull out works perfect for shy, uh, skiving. Uh, for my uh, for my cutting board, I just used an old cutting board. <laughs> I mean, we're not using it anymore, so why not? And for hole punching and whatnot, I just used a piece of scrap wood. And uh, and I always, uh, sorry, I, I, I uh, certainly put a piece of uh, leather on top of it if I was punching or something like that. Um, for, uh, <clears throat> for the hole punchers, I did buy a uh, four mil two two pronger which is fine for such a small job like there's there's uh, really not that many uh stitch holes so uh so it is easy enough to do it just take takes a few minutes longer than the four pronger um i did get a, an all from my brother as well as this uh nice uh thread thread uh groover i guess you call it from, from my brother, he was uh, doing a couple little little projects. And then I did buy a beveler. Um, you know, it's pretty important to have a beveler, so I thought I'd spend the money on that. Um, for dyeing, I just used, uh, I did buy the, uh, these are very affordable, these uh, daubers. And I bought oil dye. Um, Ian suggested definitely to go with the, the oil. Uh, that the water-based stuff doesn't work nearly as well. And then uh, for burnishing my edges, um, the gum Trugacant is, is I really suggest it um, for $8. It, it just does a super job with uh, with that. And and I made my own burnishing tool. No sense in spending another, another $10 on a burnishing tool when you can just take a dowel and just cut some edges and, and grooves and stuff. And uh, it took me five minutes to make, so... You know why would I do that? For hammers, um, I just took a normal hammer, uh, and you know they're always talking about not hitting metal on, metal on metal. So I just put a piece of scrap leather and just tied it on there. It worked like a charm. And then of course I I had uh, an old, very sturdy, like a, not rubbery. It, it's very hard. It's a very hard uh, rubber mallet. Probably it's a cheaper one I guess but I've had it for years so so both of those worked really well so I also wanted to make a maker stamp and I wanted it to be reminiscent of my YouTube channel so I made a stamp uh, an RJ stamp and uh, and I put it on there it came out very nicely and I also put it on the, the back of the, uh, the belt buckle. Um, in order to, uh, to make it, I just used my Dremel to, uh, on this, uh, cut out this piece of wood and just tooled away at, uh, and, and made a mirror image of RJ. And, uh, and then of course, I, I also made some rough grooving around here with my my Dremel um, and so it actually turned out pretty good I also used uh, something like this where I just wanted to augment the the stamping around the edges that didn't quite come out so in this case um, my sheath has a uh, a dangler on it so uh, so I needed to buy a D a D-shaped uh, attachment. Um, I sewed in 
way down here it, it was too long so then I, I also made some stitches up up here at the top to to hold it on better um, so I'll make it shorter I'll make this uh, this thong shorter next time uh, next time I do it um, the the poppers are a great thing for it for your belt and so in order to do that I bought um, some uh, some poppers with uh, I think three eight inch yep three sixteenth inch um, posts and uh, in order to do that I really you really can't get away without buying a punch it's pretty pretty affordable actually but I didn't buy a punch uh, holder I just put a piece of leather a uh, small piece of scrap leather on my uh, anvil and uh, just put it on on there to protect it as I hammered it down you don't actually have to hammer it very hard so so it, it worked out pretty well and then for the top side I just hammered um, for the part that isn't visible so for the uh, for this inside piece here uh, you just just put it straight away on the anvil um, for sewing for sewing, I bought some waxed, uh, some waxed thread, and uh, some some. I think they're number two saddle stitch uh, needles. One one nine five zero zero. So I think they worked out perfectly for this particular job. And then uh, instead of getting a saddle stitch, um, you know proper wooden uh, vice, I guess you might call it. Can't remember the exact name. I just took two pieces of leather, uh, wet them, bent them over to uh, to fit on the, uh, the vise. And then I put my uh, sheath in there and did it up loosely. Didn't have to do it up too tight. And so, so that worked perfectly. Um, of course, rubber gloves, uh, some, instead of buying Needs Foot Oil, um, people suggest or like using olive oil just as much as needs foot oil so that's what I use there um, I did buy carnauba cream um, I think that's that's really worth uh, preserving preserving any of your leather and I bought some super sheen I don't know whether I really wanted that but it it is uh, some form of waterproofing but I think that uh, that you need something, I guess, is what I'm saying. Um, and then to pull my thread stitch, my my needles through when they got stubborn or you're going over double, uh, I just put a little bit of uh, tape on my needle nose pliers and use those to pull it through. So I mean that that's uh, no, I, I I guess I needed to do some sanding, and I just used my standard uh, standard sander to to do that. So. Um, it's not really that good to to just use a loose piece of sandpaper. It it doesn't work nearly as well. Um, it it didn't. Uh, you you tend to scar the parts of the leather that you don't want to scar by mistake. So uh, you, using a sander, uh, you know, more automated sander is probably a much better solution in my mind. Anyway, that's a run quick rundown of what I did. Um, and uh, I'm pretty happy with this uh, little experiment and interested in getting on to my next project, which I'm going to start now. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's kind of fun and uh, we'll see what we do. I think I'll get into some modeling and see if I can do some sculpting and uh, stuff like that. Just a little bit of artwork on it and that would be kind of cool on my, on my next project. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later.